Hey, if you like my content, please consider subscribing, drop a like on my video, and share it on social media. Thanks. This video was originally removed by YouTube. I'm assuming it was because of copyright infringement, even though I didn't actually infringe any copyright, but their algorithm is overzealous. And then what I would have to do is go in and file an appeal and um, hopefully get the video reinstated, and that could take up to a month. So I don't know why they, why they removed it. It could be just because they didn't like the video. Um, I hope it wasn't for that because this is an important subject matter that we need to talk about. So this is the re-uploaded version. If you get to watch it, great. They, they let it stay on YouTube. If not, then, well, hey, you're not missing anything. <laughs> so a few weeks ago, we received um, leaked body camera footage from the George Floyd incident. And it kind of gives a lot more to the story than we had before. In fact, it definitely gives a lot more to the story than what we had before. It shows George Floyd resisting, and resisting quite a lot. Now, if you watched my previous video um, when the George Floyd incident initially happened, you saw me refer to the um, Minneapolis police as animals. They don't care about the citizens, etc., etc., and, and I stand by that. And I stand by that even with this leaked footage. <clears throat> they were too rough with him in the leaked footage, but he was seriously resisting the police, seriously resi resisting them. Uh, he did not want to get into the squad car. He refused to get into the squad car, and he told them to sit him on the ground. You know, put me on the ground. He said that repeatedly. I'll leave a link in the description to the footage so you can see He's not on the ground. They're trying to get him into the, the back of an SUV squad car, and he is resisting and saying, I can't breathe, I can't breathe already at this point. He's sitting there. He's sitting down. Nobody's touching him. He's, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Um, he's going, I'm not that kind of guy. I'm not that kind of guy. I can't breathe. And saying that, you know, he he had COVID-19, and he, he's, he doesn't want to be in, 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 in a confined space. And the police are like, look, get in. And get out. We'll, we'll roll the windows down for you. It'll be okay. And he refuses. He refuses. They they struggle with him. He scoots out the uh, the far side, and you know he's begging to be to be put on the ground. The police were were too rough with him, I think, and that just shows with you know that's just standard operating operations for the Minneapolis Police Department. They they drew the gun on him right away, like way too early. Um, he said. That the officer said, well, I couldn't see his hand, so I drew my gun. That's not necessarily a reason to, to draw your gun. I mean, I, I don't... I'm not a police officer, so... But it, the Minneapolis police officers are quick to draw their guns. When I was living there, they were very quick to draw their guns. Uh, George Floyd should not have died over this. They should have not have knelt on his neck. They should not have. They only needed two officers to, to keep him down. They didn't even need that many. But if they're going to keep him on the ground, on his stomach, and he's squirming around, they only needed two officers to, to, to hold him down, not three. And what they should have done was just let him sit down with his back against the wall, given him a field sobriety test, and then determined that he was intoxicated and that he needed to go to the hospital to detox or something to detox because he wasn't cooperating with them. And I mean, I don't know what you do in that situation. I, he's a big guy. He, you can tell he's bigger than the officers. I don't know what you do with him. He's he's being totally uncooperative. They barely got him to get out of his own car. And his his excuse was, "Well, I didn't do anything wrong. I, I didn't do anything. I, I'm not I'm not a bad guy. I'm not a bad guy. I didn't do anything." Well, if you're not a bad guy and you didn't do anything, then you go along with the police, and you get a lawyer. I mean, I know that the system is not perfect and that that doesn't guarantee you will succeed but resisting the police is not going to do you any good you're going to end up tased maced clubbed shot in this case manhandled until you die yes he he had a uh, drugs in his system that could have led to his death he had a heart condition that, could, that you know, these are the things that he actually died from. 
but I think it was those conditions were exacerbated by the treatment he received from the police. Yeah, I don't think he's innocent in this. I think that the police have been punished, so this no justice, no peace rioting we see, they're not peaceful protests, they are riots. No justice, no peace, well, they, they've been fired and arrested and charged. They just have not been convicted of their crimes yet. So I think that firing those four police officers, in fact, all the police in Minneapolis are going to be going away pretty soon, but I think firing those four police officers was punishment enough in this situation. You know, they're no longer allowed to be police in the state of Minnesota. That's fine. You know, If you want to move to another state and see if you can try to become a police officer there, that's on you. We live in a free country. But to, to try to burn down the country, to be looting and rioting and, and killing other people, people have died in these riots. Businesses have been destroyed. Not just businesses of white people, but businesses of black people, businesses of Hispanic people. And what sickens me to no end is the people who say they understand this. Say, it's okay, yeah, you destroyed my business. It's good, yeah, yeah. I've seen these people. I'm not joking, on the news. There was a dual-owned business. A white man and a Hispanic man owned this business. It got destroyed by the riots, and they're like, oh, you guys did the, you guys did the right thing. You guys, I'm like, are you kidding me? They destroyed your business, and you're still going to be on their side. You got to understand that they're being little babies. I'm sorry, if, if you think that it's okay for you to sit here and say, well, you know, the white man has been keeping us down for 250 years, and it's time that we stood up for ourselves, and nobody's listening to us when we talk, so we're going to start burning the place down. I'm sorry. We had an entire war fought in this country to try and bring about some equality. That didn't work. Then we had a civil rights movement where there were peaceful protests. There were also some violent protesting, some rioting probably too. I don't know I don't know the whole history about that, but to give you equal rights, to give everybody in this country equal rights. And now we're going, oh, it's, it didn't work. So we got to keep fighting. It did work. It did work. I'm sorry. You know, in my department at my job, there are two black people, three Asian people. Um, I want to say three Hispanic people, one half Jewish person, and then a few white people. There's more white people than there are of the other races, you could say. But then there's more white people in the country. So I think it's it's pretty, it's actually not an even division in the races, that the, the minority races are represented more so in my, my department than the white races in this country. So, you know, it's, is there racism? Of course, of course there's racism. Of course people do things that are racist. Of course businesses do things that are racist. Of course there is. That happens. You're never going to stop that. You're never, ever going to stop that. The best way to stop it is just to stop talking about it. We have laws in place. If you can prove that, hey, look, this happened because of racism, guess what happens? Bad things to the people who, who committed racist acts against you. you know, it, the laws are there. If, if you're being discriminated against at your job, if you're being discriminated against in housing because of your race, it's very open and shut. It's very open and shut. There are fines. You get your way. You know, you, you, you get back pay and stuff. It's it's very easy for you if you've been discriminated against because of your race or your gender. So, you know, what more do you want? What more can we give? What more can this country give? We, we, we have people in office. We have elected officials, elected politicians who are of every different race and of different religions in this country. Yet yeah, that's not enough. It's not enough. Oh, it's because your life is hard? and therefore racism. No. No. My life is hard, but my life is not hard because of racism, right? Right? That's what happens. My life is it's not hard because of racism. Mm -hmm. Maybe your life isn't hard because of racism. I mean, do you ever think of that? Maybe your life is hard because of all everything but racism. And you want to say, oh, the police are too aggressive. The police are too, the police, we need police reform. Okay, yeah, maybe we can talk about that. Let's start working on that. That's a good place to start. You don't need to burn down the city. You don't need to burn down half the country. You don't need to smash buildings and kill people because of that. Okay? And 
there's another one, one other thing I want to mention with this, and that is Tony Timpa. Look up Tony Timpa. A white man killed the same way George Floyd was, by white police. Nobody said a damn thing. And I think there was actually a couple of Hispanic police involved in that too. You can look it up. You can find it on the internet. This is... It's ridiculous. 70-some days of rioting in, in some of these cities over this. It's just an excuse for you to go out and, and commit this bad behavior. And, you know, the, the grand experiment is... It just proves that this is not working. The grand experiment is not working. That, that racism, our racist nature, our, our biased nature as human beings, our suspicious nature as human beings, is impossible to overcome. It's, in, it's just not something that, that we can really live with in a peaceful society. Like I said, I'm going to leave the links below. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.